I uh, was looking at uh, August 19th here in a quiet piece. I'm going to read one sentence, and then I'm going to talk about what I was going to talk about so I don't get in trouble with my superiors. I actually read something out of the quiet piece. Hearing the message, so I'm here with my sponsees and other enthusiastic, sober folks, continuing to take the actions, work with others, and carry the message of hope, faith, and courage. Because I do believe it's about experience, strength, and hope, not war stories, weakness, and despair. I know we can get caught up in talking about war stories, because that's all a lot of us know when we get here. But what really has value is talking about how I got out of the ditch and talking about how to stay out of the ditch, not describing the walls of the ditch. I think it's real important. But part of staying out of the ditch is, is looking for pitfalls that might happen when I'm trying to stay out of the ditch and how to deal with them. And one of the big ones is fear. Uh, and when we think about fear, we come in the program and we're new, and I, I believe, I perceive there's a lot of new people here uh, probably 90, well, 99 percent, right? I don't recognize hardly anybody. So that means we got a lot of new people who uh, would probably tell you, I ain't afraid of nothing. Well, I understand. I was there, and the truth is, is that's bullshit. So we've got to deal with the fact that I was driven by fear when I got here, but I would never admit it to anyone, okay? Our book talks about, on 68, it talks about fears of the corroding thread. It talks about, on 62, it talks about I was driven by a hundred forms of fear, stepping on the toes of my fellows and not seeing how my actions affected others. Fear is a big deal. Fear means different things to different people. Uh, you may have heard a few acronyms of what fear stands for. I'm going to throw out the two most used, and then I'm going to throw out a couple that you may not know and then I'm going to talk about the types of fear and that's what I was going to talk about. Fear uh, for me in the past we meant fuck everything and run okay and what I have found since I've been here and one of the most beneficial ways to look at fear is I need to face everything and recover because the steps talks about seeking through not around so those two old hat definitions are so threadbare, I don't even use them, but there's some new folks in here that may not have even heard them yet. The real definitions of fear to me that really have teeth, that really have a descriptive effect of what it really means is future events appearing real. And that was one of the big things that I always got caught in a trap of, of uh, looking ahead, thinking about all these things that could happen, and then really basing how I felt now on those future events. Uh, like if I had a headache, it was brain cancer. So I'm up at 2 in the morning looking at WebMD. I don't know if anybody's ever done that. Um, and what I have found is that looking back, those future events never ended up as bad as I thought they would. False evidence appearing real is another one. Um, I want to talk about the three kinds of fear. This is real important. I'm going to talk about this and we're going to talk about it because everybody's going to hear something different. There's three kinds of fear. There's driving fear. And like 62 talks about driven by a hundred forms of fear. What's driving fear? Driving fear is I get in a, in a fearful situation and I run off half cocked with half information and cause more trouble than what I started with. <clears throat> Driving fear is when she don't text me back in 2.5 minutes, I bust the inside of the windshield from the inside out in the car. I've been with a dude that did that. Boy, he had some driving fear, okay? You know, so if I realize I'm, I get driving fear from time to time, what I need to do, learn to do is how to deal with driving fear. How do I deal with driving fear in recovery? Because I can get overwhelmed. I've lost a job in recovery through no fault of my own, but I had driving fear. The next thing you knew, I got in business with some cat in the program that turned out to not be honest. Okay, what I should have done instead of being driven by fear is I should have slowed down 
and got more information. That's the key to dealing with driving fear. Slow down, don't run off half cocked. I need some pause between impulse and action. I heard a guy with 30 years when I was new say that. I wrote it in my book, it's still there. I need a pause between impulse and action. My buddy with the windshield, he needed a pause between impulse and action. Before I got in that business with that dude, I should have paused, I should have got more information and not been running off and doing something stupid based on fear. Okay, the second kind of fear is crippling fear, okay? I get so afraid, I don't do nothing. And I don't know about y'all, but if you're like me, I kick my ass the rest of my life for doing nothing. Kicking my ass for a failure. I'm scared to go get her phone number, so I'm kicking my ass for the next year cursing myself for a weakling. I'm giving you an interesting example. Of course, that's never happened to me. Bullshit. So the thing about it is, is that what I'm saying is, is that crippling fear is a real fear. I get so afraid of what I'm going to do is going to be wrong, especially if I've got a history of failures in, under my belt. I'm afraid to do anything. I'm, 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 I'm thinking that everything I touch is turns to shit. Everything I think is wrong. And believe me, you'll hear some of that stuff in meetings. Here's what I got to do to deal with crippling fear. Because, see, I got to take a chance sometimes and I got to do something. I got to, I, what I got to do is I, ask, I got to ask God for courage. I'm telling you, it's tough. Early on, it's, it's tough dealing with these things. But what I got to do and what this topic is about is knowing that these things are coming being able to spot them and then learn how to deal with them. So if I come up with some crippling fear, I, crippling fear, I'm, I'm scared to do something, I got I to, gotta, of course, talk to people around me that, that are wise counsel. I'm talking about people that are sober, not somebody next to me at the halfway house in the next bed over. You know, they liable to say, hey, let's go get two for 15s from Tiana or something. <laughs> you know, I got to get somebody that's sober, somebody with some time, run something by to tell me something that, that means something, you know? Because, see, what I'm used to having around me is some bullshit cosigners that will cosign everything I say. Yeah, man, that's right. They're an asshole. They ain't even giving a shit about the situation. See, what I don't need is bullshit cosigners. What I do need is accountability partners. And those are hard to find, and sometimes what they tell you is hard to accept. The last kind of fear and I want to end this on an up note, right? Because we're going, man, this fear stuff, that's scary. But there's a good kind of fear, okay? And it can apply to every single person in this room. Because when I started law school in uh, was, uh, about 2005, been in recovery forever, it was very scary to me. I thought I bit off more than I could chew. I thought I was trying to do something that that's for them other people because we're fucked up addicts. We're not supposed to be able to do nothing. Well, especially like that. And I was very afraid that I wasn't going to be able to pull it off. And here's the, here's, the, here's the motivating fear. This is what this one's called, motivating fear. The fear that I wasn't smart enough made me try harder. Uh-huh, yeah, made the dean's list every semester all the way through law school and passed the bar exam on the first try. Now, how does that apply to recovery? If you think you're afraid and you don't think you can do this, let it make you motivated to try harder. Because I promise you that anybody in this room can stay sober one day at a time for the rest of your life. So if you fear that you, you can't do this, you're not alone. Especially if you've got a couple of white chips under your belt, especially if you've maybe gone to treatment a couple of times, especially if you've tried to quit for good and never been able to pull it off up till now, of course you've got some fear. But let that motivate you to try harder, because I promise you that every single one of you can be in here, including myself, next year, and this time we'll come back next year and we'll have some experience, strength, and hope to share. You know, I think it's real important to, 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 to try to motivate the newcomer to come back, because I know y'all can do it. So what have we talked about? We've talked about, we've talked about driving fear. Don't run off half-cocked with half information. What I need is pause between impulse and action, and I need to get more information. We talked about crippling fear. I need to ask God for courage. I need to get some good counsel. We talked about motivating fear. If I'm afraid I can't make it, 
Let it motivate me to try harder. And I know everybody heard something different, but I want to just throw that out there and give us something to talk about. I've had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, and I'll pass.